Um, so, I work for the Environment Agency. Um, I work in the Environmental Monitoring Department, um, and we're involved in most of the statutory monitoring um, that happens. So, today that's what I want to talk to you about um, fairly briefly, but it will give you a good introduction to it. So, the Environment Agency's main goal is to improve and protect inland and coastal waters, and basically the monitoring that we do enables us to get way, some way to achieving that goal. The monitoring itself enables us to determine quality of the river environment, and it provides a, a process of measure. So if we monitor over so many years, we can then compare that and see whether the rivers are actually uh, improving or deteriorating um, as a result of perhaps the pressures in the uh, catchment or solutions to those pressures that we've put in place. So that's mainly driven by the Water Framework Directive, and that is an approach really to help us assess the environment uh, and to manage it. Uh, the Water Framework Directive is part of a much larger picture, a much larger cycle, and that not only uh, focuses on, on understanding the rivers, but also the catchment itself and the river, river basement district. It identifies the certain pressures uh, in those river basin districts and set about its objectives uh, to mitigate against those pressures. So why do we monitor, sorry, what do we monitor? Well, we routinely monitor a number of chemical uh, and ecological elements, uh, and that helps us infer a classification, so it helps tell us what condition the water environment is in and what status it is. And that's We have an overall status, and that's generally split into, into two areas. So we have chemical status and an ecological status. So the, the chemical status is, is mainly uh, refers to priority substances, um, it only refers to those substances in areas where there's known discharges of them. Uh, it works on a pass-and-fail basis and it isn't monitored in every single water body. Unlike the ecological status, which covers all these different elements and is monitored in every water body, um, we have uh, the physical chemical uh, elements, so nutrients, phosphates, pH, dissolved oxygen, ammonia. We have biological elements, so your microscopic plants, your diatoms, your invertebrates, your fish, and your plants. We monitor for specific pollutants, um, like copper, zinc, uh, and other compounds. And also a range of hydromorphological elements, like depth, width, substrate. Uh, and, and these basically, uh, all these different elements, tell us what status the water body is in. And we have different classes of status, so high through to, to bad status. Um, high status, we uh, have a set of reference conditions, so we say that rivers that are of high status are as near to natural or undisturbed as they can be. Um, this gets progressively, uh, they deviate progressively the further we get down towards bad status, so they would severely deviate from these reference conditions at that point. And we're aiming, obviously, to get towards good and high status uh, wherever we can. So the classification system with all those elements, it brings together the information on the plants and the animals, the way they interact and the environment they, they interact with. And this helps to tell us about the pressures that they're impacted by in the catchment. So if you can see um, where we have the river plants, uh, depending on the type of plants that we're finding by the rivers, it can tell us a lot about uh, how nutrient impacted these rivers are, so whether they're enriched or not. It can tell us a lot about the flows and also habitat modification. So all the, the bugs, the invertebrates, they can tell us about siltation, Lawrence mentioned sedimentation, and certain species are more tolerant to this than others. Um, it can also tell us about organic pollution and again flows. And the microscopic plants, the diatoms, they again are a good diagnostic uh, element for nutrient enrichment and also light limitation, siltation and acidification. So we monitor all of these elements in every water body at, at least one site. This site generally is at the base of the water course, so it actually tells us, uh, takes in all the information from all the pressures throughout that water course um, at the bottom. Uh, they're monitored, the, the biotic uh, elements are monitored um, on a three yearly cycle. Uh, Sorry. And the uh, phys chem elements, so your nutrients, are monitored on an annual basis. And the information that we gain from these helps to 
fill in the reasons for failure database that we have. It tells us why these river bodies are, uh, water bodies are actually failing. So if an element is, is less than good status, we need to know why it's less than good status, and, and then that informs what action we can take to actually improve that to good status. Um, so we have, we have a database, and that tells us about all the different causes of the, um, of the failures, and that can be related to an activity or a source or a sector um, in the catchment itself. So this could be point sources, so sewage treatment works or various discharges. Um, it could be more diffuse source pollution, so rural land management issues in the catchment. Um, we try to apportion these, so we say where, uh, where the failures are major and minor, um, and where possible, where we've got the data, we attribute a percentage, so we can actually look at in how, how, how the failures um, map out, you know, where, where we have the major issues. And, and like I said, this helps us then look at solutions. Um, once we know the failures, we, we can start looking at how we mitigate against them. So if we bring all this back to the tour, uh, in the upper tour itself there are 11 water bodies, um, certainly I think that the, the partnership focuses on. Um, 10 of these water bodies are less than good status, uh, that was in 2009. Um, the reasons for failure database that we have isn't really detailed enough. Um, we've, we've started down that road and we've got information on, on the major, major sources of problems, um, but we need more detail. Um, this has led to um, investigative monitoring, which uh, that's aside from really our statutory monitoring, once we've uh, diagnosed a problem, we can then investigate it a bit further. So there are 10 investigations in the upper tour itself. Um, and the, we need greater resolution, basically, because this, this ultimately leads to better environmental outcomes and more focused uh, mitigation measures. This is just a summary table um, of some of the data from the tour. So you have the, the water body name, and then a classification, overall classification in 2009 and 2013, uh, and then the elements that they're failing for. So you can see it's fish, phosphate, diatoms. The elements in red are uh, the elements that are mainly um, responsible for change, because we can see that there, there is a change in the classification between those years. Um, this isn't necessarily because there's a, a deterioration um, in, in the catchments, it could just be that in 2013 we did a lot of monitoring to collect baseline information uh, for the WFD uh, and so some elements were monitored this year that weren't in 2009 um, and they may have failed uh, this year uh, so it's just a case of having more data um, and also where we have some failures some of the elements within that may have actually improved um, and, and some may have deteriorated so just to, to wrap all of that up, we're still collecting a lot of information, um, a lot of baseline information, uh, that will tell us about the condition of the water bodies. It, it is an ongoing process. Um, we're trying to, to get greater resolution for the reasons for failure database, as Lawrence said. Um, a number of investigations have, um, are underway as a result of that, um, and, and again, they're, they're ongoing. Um, but the more information we have, the more we can collect about these failing elements, the better the environmental outcomes. And the work that this partnership's doing and the knowledge that we gain from that will only help us be more focused and, and try and answer some of those questions. Okay, thank you.